Greetings! In my previous video discussing how to set up the Remote Desktop Commander Suite, I showed you how to install our software, install its licensing, choose a service account, link our software to SQL, and perform other prerequisite actions such as adjusting Windows firewall settings on your hosts. So if you haven't watched the first setup video, please go back and do that before proceeding with this one. In this video, I will show you how to let the Remote Desktop Commander Suite know about the RDS and WBD hosts it should be monitoring. After the initial setup wizard has completed, the Remote Desktop Commander Configuration tool will launch. You will see a message box indicating that the IP geolocation database needs to be loaded into your SQL database. If you have a small RDS deployment with 200 users or less, you can click OK in this message box, but then click Cancel to prevent the loading of the IP geolocation data into the database. If you do this, our software will use an online free web service to geolocate IP addresses to the regions of the world they're associated with. However, if you have a larger RDS deployment, you should allow the IP geolocation database to be loaded into the local SQL server. Doing so will make IP geolocation occur more quickly in our program and will prevent IP geolocation from failing due to too many calls to a third-party web service. After you've figured out how you will handle IP geolocation, the next step is to add RDS or WVD host to our software so it knows that it must monitor them. This is done by clicking on the Add Manage Servers area in the left-hand side of the Remote Desktop Commander Configuration tool. From here, you can add servers by selecting them from the list of computer accounts displayed in the lower left-hand list box, or by typing them in one by one manually in the manually add server by name IP area, by importing them from the connection broker using the import from connection broker button, or by importing them from the WVD broker using the import from WVD broker button. While you will add most servers as RDS session hosts or WVD hosts, Please note that if you are adding RDS Gateway servers, you will need to indicate as such in our software so our software knows how to pull them correctly. If you have a full RDS farm, you can import your session hosts from the connection broker simply enter in the name of one and only one of your connection brokers. Our software will show you all of the RDS collections and the hosts in each collection you can choose to designate for monitoring. Now, if you are running Windows Virtual Desktop, you can import your WVD hosts directly from host pools by selecting the Import from WVD Broker button. The first time you press this button, our program will prompt you to download and install some PowerShell modules that our software needs in order to obtain this information from WVD. Select Yes for all prompts and do this twice, once for each PowerShell window that opens up. Next, you will need to enter in Azure Active Directory credentials that have the rights to query for all objects in WVD, including tenants or resource groups, host pools, and hosts. When prompted, indicate whether or not your WVD deployment is running in the legacy mode 
or the newer Azure Resource Manager mode. Then enter in the appropriate credentials and tenant or resource group when prompted. You can use either a UPN email address or service principal name as required. Now, even after you install the WVD PowerShell components, our software may indicate again that the WVD components are not installed or are not working correctly. This typically happens when you do not have the .NET version level required by Microsoft's WVD PowerShell modules installed on the VM running our software. Somewhat annoyingly, Microsoft keeps requiring a later and later version of .NET every time it updates its WVD PowerShell modules. As of this video recording in early 2021, the required .NET version level is .NET version 4.7.2. However, those PowerShell components released in the future may need an even higher .NET version level. Anyway, the solution is to update the .NET components on the VM running our software, either using Windows Update or by downloading a standalone installer for the latest .NET components. Once this is done, our software will be, will be able to list all of your WVD hosts properly. If you are monitoring Windows 10 multi-session VMs and WVD, or you are monitoring Windows 10 single user virtual desktops or physical desktops, you may need to set a few additional prerequisites to make them monitorable. Go to www.rdpsoft.com forward slash support KB and search for workstations. Then choose the KB article that explains the necessary prerequisites to make them monitorable. After you've added in servers for monitoring, Within a few minutes of being added, their last poll time should show a time and date within a few minutes of the current system time. You may need to click the green refresh button on the right hand side to see this. If one or more of your servers is persistently showing as never polled, you either have a service account issue or a Windows firewall exception issue you must correct on those servers. Please rewatch the first setup video to see how this is resolved. In this case, I have not added my service account to the local administrators group on the remote desktop gateway server I'm monitoring. As soon as I take care of that, it will start polling correctly. If you do need to monitor Windows 7 or Windows 10 workstations, either in a hosted VDI environment or in a physical workstation environment, click on the Add Manage Workstations area in the left-hand panel. You can then add the workstations from the list of available workstations in the lower left-hand area. However, make sure that you do not add multi-session Windows 10 virtual machines hosted in Windows Virtual Desktop in the monitored workstations area, as this will cause a licensing problem. Instead, add Windows 10 multi-session VMs running in Windows Virtual Desktop in the Add Manage Servers area, as they are licensed as servers. If you are monitoring Windows 10 multi-session VMs in WVD, or you are monitoring Windows 10 single user virtual desktops or physical desktops, you may need to set a few additional prerequisites to make them monitorable. Go to www.rdpsoft.com forward slash support KB and search for workstations. Then choose the KB article that explains the necessary prerequisites to make them monitorable. 
Finally, click on the Launch Remote Desktop Commander for Advanced Session Analysis link in the left-hand panel. This should launch the Remote Desktop Commander client and show you the current systems that are being monitored. It may take a few minutes for these systems to appear. If you encounter an error when launching the client, or if the client is still operating in light mode, you most likely were running the free version of our client before upgrading to the entire suite. To fix this issue, perform the following steps, and then the client will automatically reconfigure itself to work in suite mode, allowing you to use all dashboards and reports available to you in the full version of the suite. Open up Windows Explorer, then navigate to percent app data percent, then navigate to RDP Soft, then Remote Desktop Commander. Finally, locate the rdrclient.dat file, which exists in one of the version folders, and delete it. Once this is done, relaunch the Remote Desktop Commander client, and it should reconfigure itself without issue. Congratulations! You've now configured the Remote Desktop Commander suite to collect valuable data from your RDS hosts, WVD hosts, or Citrix hosts in your environment. Please watch my next video which discusses how to deploy the optional Remote Desktop Commander agent service, should you wish, and how to tune it.